on in these abortuaries? What about Planned Parenthood? What about what's happening there? When I was on the mall a few weeks ago in Washington, I talked about my mom and I talked about the circumstances around my birth and my mother knew that if I came to birth, I could disrupt her relationship with the man that she was with because my father, whom she married, and he um, was a handsome philanderer, so she got rid of him, but he came back on the scene and she was pregnant with me. The man, my mother's very dark, and the man that gave my mother her first child is very dark. So my, ch my brother is dark. But my father was light-skinned, curly-haired. So she was afraid that if that baby came to birth and was light-skinned, it would destroy her relationship with that man. So she decided to abort me. And she tried three times to abort me. And on the third time, in those days, and she used a hanger. And she was unsuccessful. And I came to birth. And I said that on the mall to all those people that were there and to the millions who were watching. If my mother were successful in aborting me, what would the world have lost? Jesus was born under strange circumstances. And he had, she had to be put away privily, as the Bible teaches, because if she were seen pregnant, the law was, where's the husband? Where's the father? Well, you say Holy Ghost, but we know there's no human being born without the agency of a man that's real so they would have killed mary but her baby was the last prophet to the jewish people jesus i'm saying that to say this every prayer that we pray is answered through the womb of a woman and a baby that was given a chance to live and to grow, and that's why we are against eugenics. Mr. Muhammad was death on birth control. He called it a death plan by the government against poor people. So we find that we are kindred spirits in so many ways. And you know, Mr. Jones, I felt that today. I felt that when we met and you could question me and strip away whatever there is, if there's something to be stripped away, that America could see me as I am, white people could see me as I am. <laughs> yourself in that position as a moral judge. I think you should keep quiet. In the mind of Satan was to set up a one world government where he would be in charge. They talk about me, but they won't confront me. What the hell business is it of yours? America should keep her mouth shut. I didn't mean to be so fired. No, no, that's good. It's good. That's my passion. As a student of my teacher, I think I should always be dignified in my expression, although sometimes in passion, I lose it. Absolutely. <laughs> and so I thought about, you know, when they said Farrakhan 
uh, he uh, wants to kill all white people and he's advocating 10,000 fearless men to go out and kill white people as though I I'm insane. That's insanity. And I've been teaching for 60 years, sir, and no one who follows me has ever gone out and killed a white person, harmed a Jewish person, bombed a synagogue, or even put some swastika on a synagogue, because that's against our religion to deface a house of worship. I'm saying that to say this. I, when I said in Florida, you know, naming all the blacks that got shot down, and according to something I just read, where one black man every 28 hours is shot by a policeman, and young black men are nine times more likely than other Americans to be killed by police officers in 2015, according to the findings of the Guardian newspaper, 1,134 deaths at the hands of law enforcement officers happened last year. As a black man who loves my people, I'm grieved not only at police killing us, but I am grieved at our killing of each other, which sometimes is 10 times more than what white policemen have done. So in my passion against that, and this has been gradually increasing with me over the years, I said, if the federal government does not intercede to see that justice comes to us, because that's the government's job. It's not my job to kill my killer. It's the government's job to arrest the killer, bring them before a court of law, and punish them for their misdeed. But when the government fails to do it, what are we to do? We have to defend our lives. And so I said, stop them wherever you find them. Not everybody, just the ones that kill us out of the law of justice. If the government won't arrest them and do that, somehow we're going to ultimately do that and then it leads to what they'll say, it's a race war? No. We are not in any position at all to engage in a race war. It's ridiculous. It's destructive. It's suicidal. However, persecution in the Quran, it says, is worse than slaughter. And you know, you talk about 1776. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel okay. Castro took the guns. Many... Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you get out there on the street begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? And you are so right. But in 1776, America had enough. The colonial uh, people under Britain had enough. So when Patrick Henry said, give us liberty, or we are willing to pay the price, which is death, you force people into that when government fails to do its job to redress the grievance of the people who are suffering. I will put this interview out basically unedited. I mean, we'll put a lot of clips in and, and articles and things, but we're going to put almost the whole interview out basically. Mainstream media, they're going to take just what you said, even though you quoted Patrick Henry and the rest of it, I guarantee you they're going to take that and just show the clip again out of context. And they do that with me too. So I, I don't even, I'm asking you, how, how do we deal with that when there's nothing we can do? I guess mainstream media is losing credibility losing ratings, even USA Today a few weeks ago admitted 
Uh, television for politics is dead. Uh, it faces its mortality. So I think I just answered my question. They've discredited themselves, but still, they just go on lying, they go on twisting. Talk show host is Alex Jones. He's a, he's a conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host Alex Jones. Alex Jones. His name is Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Alex Jones, a nut job radio guy. Talk show host Alex Jones. A man who trades in such sinister conspiracy theories, you have to wonder if he really believes half of what he says. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. Hate speech. Can anything be done to stop the hatred? I think Alex was the one who took the pro-gun position. 1776 will commence again if you try to take off firearms. I don't want that man to have a gun. Alex Jones is a 9-11 truther. That conspiracy theory comes from the mother of all conspiracy theories. It's an internet talk show called Infowars. I heard that on Alex Jones, so it's Please. true. Dane. I heard it on Alex Jones, so I know it's true. You're making some very serious allegations against the U.S. government, saying that they stage attacks, they allow them to occur in the United States against U.S. Let's citizens. Let's declassify. Alex Jones may sound crazy, I think that Alex Jones is a lunatic. That man's a threat to this country. King of the conspiracy theorists. Deeply, I think, racist. I just got called racist by MSNBC. He's considered legit among the crazy. Challenge Alex Jones to a boxing match, show up with a semi-automatic that you got <laughs> legally, and pop him. I'd love to see that. <laughs> In uniform. <laughs> Keep shoving lies at your audience, jackasses. I like that guy. That is the best. The American people deserve a government that is truly of the people, by the people, and for the people. They don't have that kind of government as we speak. I hear Mr. Trump and other white Americans say, we must take our country back. And my question, Mr. Jones, Take it back from whom? That was my next question. You were, <laughs> you were alluding to the Federal Reserve you've been a big critic of for, yes. for 40, 50 years. Can you speak specifically to the Federal Reserve? You talked about Congress taking its power to print and coin the money back. What is the uh, proper relationship? What should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. I mean, that, that is such an incredible statement. I mean, that's the real rulers right there, in my view. They boldly declare, we run this. And for the American people to think that a black man in the White House has taken over this country, you know, that is so far from the truth because he's just the CEO of USA Inc. And they can either hire him or fire him for the job that he's doing, but he's not in control. Did you know that it was John Kennedy who recognized that there was a shadow government? Kennedy said, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. 
Its preparations are